My name is Bill Haley for Haley 2024, the Movements Government Reform Ideas. This video is going to be on economics. I call it Haleynomics for my last name, Haley, and then nomics. And I, um, while nothing is new under the sun, um, I think I have a little bit different ways of explaining things economically. I'm very free market, but please take a look at how I explain things. This lesson is going to be on inflation. I'm doing about a dozen different videos in, the, in late um, May of 2024. I'll be putting up on all my sites, trying to explain a little bit differently, some in shorter form. This one's going to be on a little bit longer form, hopefully under 20 minutes. But let's go through it and explain inflation because we do have a big problem with inflation in this country. And more people have to understand what good, good currency is and where it goes bad. And inflation is because we don't do currency correctly. Okay, let's shrink down the whole... Um, whole economy, whole world, down to 10 person, 10 person community. We can expand this back out to a millions, but to wrap our, right, wrap our brains around the math, let's take it down and wrap our brains around what's happening. Let's take it down to a 10 person community. Every person gets paid roughly $10 a month. I mean, $10 a week. And um, so it's $100 economy. And again, there's a lot of reasons why people should be paying more and a lot of people should be paying less. That's not my debate right now. I'm just trying to get the, um, the numbers to be, you can wrap your head, head around the math and the numbers and um, what's going on. So uh, in this 10 person community, we need $30 or 30% of this community's income to pay for government services. Um, so that's somewhat normal. We're probably at 40 or 50, 40 or 50 percent, but I don't think we should be. I think we should be at 10 percent, but that's beside the point right now. Let's explain how good economics and good currency is done and um, how we are doing what we're doing wrong with it. But first, we have to understand what good currency is. OK, the seven free, the three people are going to be teacher, cop and soldier. The other seven people are going to be bringing product to the market, um, and we'll go over the other other um, professions in a second. But the seven free enterprise people bring 10, mar 10 products or services to the market every week. So that's 70 items, and each item is going to be $1. Um, to get the $30 for the three tax-supported uh, professions, there is a 30% tax. Um, the seven free market people sold $10, I mean 10 items worth $1, and they paid, so they made $10 and they paid $3 in tax. That's $21 needed to pay the um, tax supported people, the cop, the soldier, and the teacher. The three tax supported people, they also need to pay, they, are, they got paid the $10, but they also have to pay the 30% tax to pay for the tax supported people, even themselves. They have to pay themselves. Um, it goes through a system, but they have to pay themselves um, because the cop providing cop services even for themselves. Okay. Um, and they, they benefit from the um, soldier services and the t education. Okay. And they have $3 withheld because they got paid um, $10. They have $3 withheld for the $30 tax. So they each net seven dollars or that twenty one dollars that was taxed from every, from everybody else okay what actually ha what what is actually happening is that the government is forcing all ten people including the cop the teacher and the um soldier to pay one dollar each to the tax three tax supported people all ten people buy seven free market items and all three public slash government items per week. So all 10 people buy seven of the free market items and three government items. If the government did not tax that 30% away, so that's the way it should go. Now, obviously I want it maybe down 10% for government. But anyway, if, the, if government did not tax that 30% away from all the people and just printed up the $30, to pay for the government people. Let's see what would happen. There would be $100. And all the all seven people, the free market people came with $10 and, and the cop, the soldier and the teacher also came with $10. They all started with 
and they go to the market. And uh, there would be only 70 $1 items in there, the free enterprise items in there. So what's going to happen? That is why inflation is, um, is, is called, that is why so many call inflation too many dollars chasing too few goods. Because you have $100 chasing 70 items that should be $1 each. It is vital to tax or take away those um, dollars that pay for government professions. It's vital that we don't just let people keep their money, get those services, and to give the cop new money. Because what's going to happen? We just talked about $100 chasing $70 worth of product. It is vital to treat government jobs as required purchases by everyone. In the market, the three government workers should have the teacher service cards, cop service cards, and soldier service cards. So they should go to the market and have 10 cards each for four hours of their service. Um, so uh, that's 40 hours. And they sell one card per to everybody. And they have to buy one themselves um, just to make the math work. Because even the teacher gets benefited by education. The teacher gets benefited by the cop. The cop gets benefited by the soldier. Soldier gets benefited by um, paying himself just for the simple reason he can get that training needed um, to protect the whole community. Um, okay. Uh, okay, so I, I want I want mo more things to be just required purchases for these government services from each person in the community as a um, social contract. To live in this community, you have to pay the, a cop. You have to have a cop contract. You have to have a teacher contract. You have to have a soldier contract. And I have a full system for that, so it, it works out. Okay. There, it, there are 10 people with $10 each chasing 70 $1 free market items and 30 $1 government service cards. So there are 10 people with $10 each chasing 70 $1 items, 30 $1 items from the government um, service cards. So all people came with $10. They bought 10 things, 7 being free market things, 10 being the soldier, the teacher, and the um, paying one dollar to the soldier services, cop services, teacher services, one dollar each. So they all came with ten dollars and left with ten dollars. That's what should be happening, just to make my math correct. There's good reasons why some people want to work thirty hours and other people want to work fifty hours. We let them do it, but for purposes of our math and for simplicity and for you to understand, let's just keep it. Everybody working forty hours. All people came with 10, 10 items and left with 10 items. And you, all, everybody left with 10, I mean, with service cards for the teacher, the cop, and the soldier. All 10 of them left with three service cards worth four hours each. And obviously the teacher and the cop and the um, soldier is protecting everybody the whole time. But you know what I'm, I'm, I'm just getting at. They all left with that soldier contract, that cop contract. Um, for that week, and that costs a dollar. Okay, okay. If the government did not tax that thirty percent away from all the people and just printed up the thirty dollars to pay for the government people, there would be one hundred dollars going into the market, and there would only be seventy one dollar free market items to buy. We we got rid of that requirement to um pay for the cop services, the social services, and the teacher services, and we're just printing up new money. But now we have $100 chasing 70 items. If the price stayed the same after 70 items were sold, the market would be sold out. And people with $30 would be left seeking items to buy. Normally all 10 people come with come, come to the market with $10 and leave with $10. But with printing of the $30 um, for the government services, people come with 10 and now they had thirty dollars left over. They're, they're they're going home with thirteen dollars because they they could only spend seven dollars um, because the product products ran out. 
So they go home with $13. The math is there. All people just, are, are people just saving the $3 per week? And uh, to, what, to what end are we saving $3? Because there's not products in there backing up those dollars. There's not products in the store backing up those dollars. If you want to have savings, it's good to have the savings backed up. There's actual wheat, land, gold, um, cows, whatever, backing up the dollars that you have. Are people just saving the $3 per week? For what purpose? Um, what if someone came to the market early and bought up, bought quickly and spent all $13? And others were slower and received only three or four items. People would start getting mad. The notion of everyone buying only seven items would go away quickly, especially when we expand in, in a small town of 10 people, peer pressure and, and um, so, social co cohesion might be able to um, handle that. Tens of millions of people, not so much. Uh, people, that, that notion would go away quickly. You might be able to maintain that with a 10 member community, but when it expands to millions, it's not becoming reasonable anymore. Okay, if you could keep everyone buying only seven items, people would not see the value in savings. Why, why are we saving those, those dollars? Because you can only buy those seven items per week. Even if you go and you still have to bring um, product to, if you want to buy, get those seven items, you still have to um, bring new product to the market. Or otherwise, let's say you don't, let's say you don't want to bring any product to market. You you want to take a vacation. You didn't bring any wheat to market that week. You have thirty forty dollars left over, so you just use those thirty forty dollars. Well, now we don't have your ten items. We only have 60 items. If other people that did the same thing, even less. So you would have no longer the requirement of everybody um, buying, um, walking away with seven items because there's only 60 items, 10 people looking for it. So you would have problems. If you could, if you could keep everyone buying only seven items, people would not see the value in savings. Everyone would go home with first week ten dollars, then thirteen dollars, sixteen dollars, nineteen dollars, twenty two dollars, twenty five, twenty eight. It keeps on growing. <clears throat> what would people do with those dollars? Simple math: one hundred divided by seventy items is a dollar forty three per item. So the price would have to go up to a dollar forty three, and then you add thirty dollars more, so it keeps on going up, and thirty dollars more, it keeps on going up. And thirty dollars more and keeps on going up. As the price goes up, the three people, um, the cop, the teacher, and the um, soldier, they're going to get mad, saying, "Hey, I'm only getting paid ten dollars. Anybody else is getting walking away with uh, fourteen dollars, seventeen dollars, twenty dollars as as the prices go up. We need to keep um, up with the price. I want ten percent. So you're going to see a big difference there. Okay, the tax supported professionals will be asking for a rat raise." And the cost of living. The price has to increase for all 10 professions. Um, money printing will have to rise as well because as you do the, um, as a tax supported people, the cop, the teacher, and the um, soldier, they have to um, get paid more. So money printing keeps on going up. First week, a dollar, dollar 43, 204, 292, 18 because it goes up 43%, not just 43 cent each time, 43%. Okay, each week, only 70 free market items are in the market. If more money is printed, the total money needs to be divided by 70 to achieve the price per item. Um, with millions of people in the economy, numbers are not easy, easily, and numbers not easily accessible. It will, be, get, get, it will get really messy, and it is right now. But everyone will rise or raise their prices. But some people cannot raise their prices very easily. But everybody keeps on one, wanting to get their seven items from the market. If the prices rise, you're going to get six, and then five, and then four. You're going to get mad. And um, so things get messy. You're going to ask for a raise. Everybody's going to ask for a raise. You're going to raise your price for your wheat, for your cattle, for your beef, your doctor services. And it just gets messy. Some people will be able to raise their prices more easily and other people are not going to be able to raise their prices. If you're on retirement, fixed income, you can't raise your prices. You're just going to be out of luck. You get really uh, messed up like a lot of retired people are right now. And some people with long-term plans will have difficulties. If you if you had long-term plans with dollars 
and a, and a business plan, you're going to get messed up. Okay. One explanation of inflation. I have a lot of different um, videos out there. It's going to be posted in late May of 2024. And it's going to address this a little bit differently. Some in shorter form, some in longer form. This one's, what, 15 minutes. Until the next video.